we have recipes to share with you from the No Did Cookbook. Recipes written by Catherine Bannon. Contributions about growing the vegetables written by me, self-published. And we just had an order for books to America. So in North America, Chelsea Green Publishing now stock them and you can buy them from them and in bookshops around the US. And we've made some delicious food from the book and I want to show you what it looks like and at the end I'll have a little tasting and I can describe that to you. So the, the first one is, actually it's my no dig, no need <laughs> bread. So this is rye sourdough bread uh, made without kneading. So it sort of fits in the no dig narrative a bit because it's no need bread. And it's actually really easy and very simple and in the book it just takes you through how to do it. it. It cuts out a lot of the complications you often have with sourdough bread and like the starter I don't uh, feed my starter I just keep it in the fridge and add a little bit of oil to the bread and it cuts really nicely as you can see. This bread is actually three days old now and it's still very soft. It, it lasts a long time so you don't have to bake bread every day to have fresh bread. It's really nutritious. And then the next recipe, Nicola's actually been making this food in the kitchen this morning and we've been improvising. That's something that we really encourage in the book because it's very rare that you'll read a recipe and you've got everything you need. Don't worry and you can improvise and originally we were going to make a kale kind of um, dip <laughs> or pesto maybe and actually this is a nettle and mint pesto because I suddenly realized yesterday that I didn't have any kale because we picked it all and sold it basically so this we got loads of stinging nettles at the moment so that's the tops of stinging nettles which I cut this morning and wearing gloves Nicola put them blended it and put in a bit of um, there's a recipe here a bit of mint and the recipes, the, the pesto recipes in this book tend to be based on sunflower seeds, but that's totally your call. Catherine, who, who devised them, she says, you know, the nuts you use in a pesto, it could be pine nuts, it could be cashews, or whatever you like. So it's not so much about giving you a list of what you need or have to use, and understanding how you can vary it according to your tastes and what's available. And next we have, and here's another example of improvisation, um, the carrot and parsnip dip, which we decided to change parsnip to beetroot because it's very much the same principle. This dip is going towards being a, a hummus. It has some of the homegrown pulses in the, the, the white runner beans. So it's got a bit of that creaminess from them and it's pretty well blended, pre-roasted beetroot and carrot with some oil and we put the radish around it because that's a really nice way to eat. Well, both the, this one actually and the nettle, which are quite concentrated foods. There's a lot of food quality and nutrient density, I would say, on the table here. Uh, next up, what have we got? Oh yeah, we got a sauerkraut. So this is one I made about seven weeks ago, which is getting a little bit old for sauerkraut, depending on the temperature you keep it at. And basically sauerkraut is just finely chopped anything really, but in this case cabbage, some lovely white filderkraut cabbage I grew last autumn. Chop them up really fine, rub with salt for 10 minutes, uh, 25 grams per kilo of cabbage. And the liquid that comes out is what you is in there. And to keep the sauerkraut uh, good, it doesn't have to be in the fridge or anything, although it will keep less spicy if it is, but it's, you aim to keep the ingredients underwater or under the liquid, I should say. The liquid is what came out of the cabbage and it's got a really nice flavor. Do have a go at making sauerkraut and kimchi. You know, the little video I made about that uh, at Christmas, uh, they're easier than you might think. Okay, what do we got next? And also a great way to store cabbage, you know. So here we are, this is late March now. And those cabbages, well, they're still okay actually, but they're, they're losing quality. The outer leaves are going a bit moldy. Now we have some new vegetables, which is the, some freshly picked chard, but that has been grown in polytunnel greenhouse because under cover, you get much stronger growth over winter. In fact, we, we had a bit colder winter than usual here and the chard got destroyed outside by frost, but under cover, and that's also from home safe seed. Interesting how I think you get more strength and vigor in the plant from that. I've really been impressed with it. So I picked some this morning, 
Nicola chopped it up in pieces, as you can see. And these little beans are um, pulses. They're white sar, they're called. is the variety of runner bean or pole bean that I grow and harvest as a dry bean. Uh, I'm looking forward to trying that one. I know from previous times it's, it's one of the most delicious dishes here, although they're all good. Oh, yeah, and then <laughs> that's the end of the recipes from the book, because the, the next one is the recipe from the garden. And, and that links to the growing advice in the book, you know, there's about how you grow your own salad. So this is salad that, this is what we're picking at the moment, basically, late March. If you look at this salad bowl in May, it will be completely different. If you look at it in September, it will be different again. And that's just growing seasonal salads. So the emphasis is very much on seasonal food from the garden. And now I feel it's time to sit down and taste some. Homegrown and home-cooked food, this is such a treat. In fact, I, I just had a message this week from a lady down the road who runs a catering business, and she said I, I'd, I'd been selling her some squashes, crown print squash, and uh, she said, can you please spare one? I said, I've run out. <laughs> Actually, I've still got a few. And she said, can you please spare one? Because I cannot get one that tastes the same as those. And this, this is what this is all about. It's your own food turning it into something even better. This is sauerkraut is like pre-digested cabbage. <laughs> the, the fermentation is, is helping you to digest as well as giving good microbes for your gut. So it's a win-win making sauerkraut tasty. It's actually, it's slightly vinegary, which is what it's meant to be, but it's definitely not overpowering. Most people I give this to, they, they really, they say, oh, no, nicer than they thought, basically. Then here we, um, Nicola has been assembling this, these dishes to eat from, from what, everything she made and I made. And we've got these thing in nettle um, pesto, so you can watch my mouth explode, not. Mm. It goes really well on the bread. Wow, strong. Mm. Yeah, you, you can tell that's nettle, which I say, mean in a good way. It's got a lot of that kind of iron flavour. I think there's a lot of nutrition in nettle. And they're bang in season. You know, when you eat seasonal food like this, you're, you're almost bound to get more nutrition. And this is a, such a nice way to eat the carrot and beetroot dip. I mean, you could eat this just by the forkful. <laughs> Actually, the radish just gives it a bit of a, a juicy, mm, juicy compliment to them. These radish, by the way, they're not too spicy. When you grow them in the, the cool of the late winter, early spring, they don't get so pungent. So these were sown, actually these were sown late January, multi-sown, in grown in the polytunnel. Right, now we have, I think I've missed something, but I think I've got it all. Yeah, this delicious... I know this is delicious, by the way. <laughs> Not because I ate it this morning, but I've had it before, and it brilliant combination. Mm. So you have the creaminess of the beans, the slightly metallic flavour of the chard. Again, that's not an insult. <laughs> Raymond Blanc would say he doesn't like chard. Actually, he doesn't like it raw. When it's cooked, it's quite mild. And the, the, the recipes, Nicola's put quite a bit of um, onion in there, so that's really adds to the sweetness, actually, as much as anything. That, that, again, that's a dish you could eat as a main course. And then any of these go nicely. I won't chop my way through all these, but you can see we've got things here like lamb crest, American lamb crest. And that's Grenoble red lettuce, which is my favourite winter lettuce. That's from Home Safe Seed. We've got a video about that if you want to look it up. And that's a red lace mustard, deepest colour at this time of year. It goes a bit paler as we go through into spring. And the ruby chard, so that, that's what raw and cooked, very versatile vegetable. Do recommend you sow some. I really hope that you got some great ideas from this video and that it will fuel your enthusiasm for growing food. You know, it's one of the most noble occupations that any of us can do is to grow our own food and then share it with friends and discover these amazing flavors and the book you know has the resource there is to help you find ways you'll often have gluts how do you deal with the gluts and both how to cook them and how to preserve them as well 